The White Horse Prophecy, as reported by Edwin Rushton from May 1843. Joseph Smith I want to tell you something. I will speak in a parable, like unto John the Revelator. You will go to the Rocky Mountains, and you will be a great and mighty people established there, which I will call the White Horse of Peace and Safety. I shall never go there. Your enemies will continue to follow you with persecutions and will make obnoxious laws against you in Congress to destroy the White Horse. But you will have a friend or two to defend you, to throw out the worst part of the laws, so that they will not hurt much. You must continue to petition Congress all the time. But they will treat you like strangers and aliens, and they will not give you your rights, but will govern you with strangers and commissioners. You will see the Constitution of the United States almost destroyed. It will hang by a thread, as if it were as fine as the finest silk fiber. I love the Constitution. It was made by the inspiration of God, and it will be preserved and saved by the efforts of the White Horse and the Red Horse, who will combine in its defense. The White Horse will raise an ensign on the tops of the mountains of peace and safety. The White Horse will find the mountains full of minerals, and they will become very rich. You will see silver piled up in the streets. You will see gold shoveled up like sand. Gold will be of little value, even in a mercantile capacity, for the people of the world will have something else to do in seeking for salvation. The time will come when the banks in every nation will fail, and only two places will be safe where people can deposit their gold and treasures. These places will be the White Horse and England's vaults. A terrible revolution will take place in the land of America, such as never been seen before for the land will be literally left without a supreme government, and every species of wickedness will run rampant. Father will be against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother. The most terrible scenes of murder and bloodshed and rapine that have ever looked upon will take place. Peace will be taken from the earth, and there will be no peace only in the Rocky Mountains. This will cause many hundreds and thousands of the honest in heart to gather there, not because they would be saints, but for safety, and because they would not take up the sword against their neighbor. You will be so numerous that you will be in danger of famine, but not for the want of seed time and harvest, but because so many to be fed. Many will come with bundles under their arms to escape the calamities, and there will be no escape except by fleeing to Zion. Those that come to you will try to keep the laws and be one with you, for they will see your unity and greatness of your organization. The Turkish Empire, or the Crescent, will be one of the first powers that will be disrupted, for freedom must be given for the gospel to be preached in the Holy Land. The Lord took of the best blood of the nations and planted them on the small island now called England and Great Britain, and gave them great power in the nations for a thousand years, and their power will continue with them, that they may keep the balance of power and keep Russia from usurping her power over all the world. England and France are now bitter enemies, but they will be allied together and be united to keep Russia from conquering the world. The two popes, Greek and Catholic, will come together and be united. The Protestant religions do not know how much they are indebted to Henry VIII for throwing off the Pope's bull and establishing the Protestant faith. He was the only monarch who could do so at the time, and did it because this nation, England, was at his back to sustain him. One of the peculiar features in England is the established red coat, a uniform so remarkable a mark to shoot at and yet they have conquered wherever they have gone. The reason for this will be known by them some day. The lion and the unicorn of Israel is their ensign. The wisdom and statesmanship of England comes from having so much of the blood of Israel in the nation. While the terrible revolution of which I have spoken has been going on, England will be neutral until it becomes so inhuman that she will interfere to stop the shedding of blood. England and France will unite to subdue the nations. They will find the nations so broken up and so many claiming government till there will be no responsible government 
Then it will appear to the nations or powers as though England has taken possession of the country. The black horse will flee to the invaders and will join with him, for they will have fear of the coming slaves again. Knowing England did not believe in slavery, fleeing to them they believe would make them safe. Armed with British bayonets, the doings of the black horse will be terrible. During this time, the great white horse will have gathered strength sending out elders to gather the honest in heart among the pale horse, or people of the United States, to stand by the Constitution of the United States, as it was given by inspiration of God. In these days, God will set up a kingdom, never to be thrown down, for other kingdoms to come unto. And these kingdoms that will not let the gospel be preached will be humbled until they will. England, Germany, Norway, Denmark, Sweden, Switzerland, Holland, and Belgium have a considerable amount of blood of Israel among their people, which must be gathered. These nations will submit to the kingdom of God. England will be the last of these kingdoms to surrender. But when she does, she will do so as whole in comparison as she threw off the Catholic power. The nobility know that the gospel is true but it is not enough pomp and grandeur and influence for them to embrace it. They are proud and will not acknowledge the kingdom of God or come unto it until they see the power which it will have. Peace and safety in the Rocky Mountains will be protected by a cordon band of the white horse and the red horse. The coming of the Messiah among this people will be so natural that only those who see him will know that he has come. But he will come and give his laws unto Zion, and minister unto his people. This will not be his coming in the clouds of heaven, to make vengeance on the wicked of the world. The temple in Jackson County will be built in this generation. The saints will think there will not be a time to build it, but with all the help you receive, you can put up a great temple quickly. They will have all the gold, silver, and precious stones, for these things only will be used for the beautifying of the temple. All the skilled mechanics you want, and the ten tribes of Israel will help you build it. When you see this land bound with iron, you may look toward Jackson County. There is a land beyond the Rocky Mountains that will be invaded by the heathen Chinese, unless great care and protection are given. Where there is no law, there is no condemnation, and this will apply to them. Power will be given to the white horse to rebuke nations far off, and they will be one with the white horse. But when the land goes forth, they will obey, for the law will go forth from Zion. The last great struggle Zion will have to contend with will be when the whole of the Americas will make the Zion of our God. Those opposing will be called Gog and Magog, some of the world led by the Russian Tsar, and their power will be great, but all opposition will be overcome, and then this land will be the Zion of our God.